We're going to pray and we're going to get started uh, today. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Um, again, Father, we are always reminded that this day is a gift. Um, it's just not a gift. It's a gift from you. This is the day the Lord has made. And David said, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So we thank you for this day and we make that choice today to be joyful and uh, Lord, we just pray for your help in stewarding this day well in your strong name. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to dig into today. See, you, I, I told you last time that we were going to be talking about the leadership styles of uh, Peter, Paul and Mary. Um, but instead, uh, we're one more week on the qualities essential to leadership because we did not make it through last week. Uh, so we'll, we'll still be on track to get through the CU material um, and I will try in one of these to sort of make up two and one. Not as good as the Trinity with three and one, but we'll try to make up two and one for the week we lost. Right, Shri? Because Shri reminds me that that is very important. All right, so we will, we will make that up. We're going we're gonna to read a passage out of Joshua today, which I think uh, when you look at leadership in the Bible. Um, Moses, I think, is like, in my mind, just one of the great examples of, of spiritual leadership. Um, in, in fact, even in many secular books, you will see the example of Moses referred to uh, and, and his life studied on, on leadership. And here we come to a story that uh, where where Moses had just died and Joshua was stepping up into a place of leadership. And I just think it's an amazing story uh, and an amazing narrative on uh, what leadership looks like. Uh, after the death of Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, uh, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun. Who is Moses' aide? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now that always, that, that little passage there always captivates me because I'm thinking, you don't think Joshua didn't know, some, you know, this was the case. I mean, but God is doing more than sort of overstating the obvious to Joshua. Whether it was self-doubt whether it was just needing affirmation in some way, um, God is reminding Joshua, uh, listen, Moses is, is dead. Um, now, then you and all these people need to get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them. And I will give you every place where you set your foot, just as I promised Moses. And your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. And no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And I love this passage. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So this is a this is these next words are repeated several times throughout the book of Joshua. And I think they're so powerful because of all this, Joshua, uh, you know, you're the leader. I've got great promises before you. Uh, so here's what you can do. You can be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. In case you didn't get that, Joshua, be strong and very courageous. And be careful to obey the law of my servant Moses that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn it from the left or to the right. Uh, that you may be successful in wherever you go. 
Keep this book of law on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. That's very important. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, now here's where the rubber meets the road, right? For any leader. Have I not commanded you? Again, Joshua, for the third time in just a few verses, be strong and be courageous. In other words, you can do this. You can do this, Joshua. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord will be with you wherever you go. And, and if you want to be like, uh, you know, my, I won't say my sassy 13-year-old daughter, uh, but my other daughter, right, who would sometimes get that sassy, whatever, wherever, you know, wherever. That means wherever you are, right? Wherever you are, wherever you go. So I want us to see this today uh, in the context of, of our lives. God has put a mantle of leadership upon every single one of us. Right? And there are days that we step into that classroom or we're, we're uh, having some kind of communication with our kids or with a team that we lead. And there's those moments that we might feel insecure we might feel unequipped for the challenge. We might feel like we're not worthy for the mantle that has been put upon us. Uh, whatever the case, we might feel like that we are the wrong person in this, in this situation. And I think that the Holy Spirit wants to remind each of us in our context of leadership, you are the leader. We are the leader and not only are we the leader, but God has called us. God has called you to this position of leadership that he has put you in. And because he has called you, you can be strong and you can be courageous in what he's called you to do. Joshua, I know you've been following Moses and I know it's been sort of you, you've loved sort of taking your lead. But but Joshua, you're the leader and you can do this because I'm with you, Joshua. And so what I'm going to call you to do is be strong and courageous in this moment. Put my word in your heart, meditate on it day and night, and you're going to be able to do this, Joshua. Now, I want to finish this session on, on these qualities essential to leadership because this isn't always easy to do. Like it's not always easy to step into that that leadership that God has called you to. It's not always to believe about yourself that you are the leader that God has called for whatever role you're in. It's not always easy to believe that. But if we will develop, if we will commit ourselves to developing these qualities of a leader and we'll be committed to them, I believe they will build confidence in us an assuredness in us that will help us to keep our focus on God and to lead those people that he has called us to lead. So let's finish up the qualities essential to leadership. Um, the first one I want to talk about today is a positive attitude. A positive attitude. Um, here's what I know about Joshua and I, I know about all of us as well that if we believe we can, we can. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is about Joshua uh, when, when he was one of the spies that went into the promised land. And do you remember when they came back and all the other spies, the other 10 spies were like, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. Joshua looked out, and Joshua and Caleb looked out and, and they're like, Yes, there are many giants, but our God is bigger. Yes, there are many challenges, but we can overcome them all with his help. Yes, there are a lot of reasons that you might say we can't, 
But I love the wording. In fact, when you look through what the spy said over and over again, you will see no matter the version of the Bible you're reading out of, we can't, we can't, we can't. But when Joshua and Caleb speak, it's we can, we can, we can. And, and, and it is so true. It is so true of each of us. If we believe we can't, it is most certain that we won't. But when we believe we can, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. When we believe we can because he has said we could and because he has told us be strong and courageous because I am with you. And when we really believe that there is no challenge we can overcome. There is nothing that we can not do. In fact, to say otherwise, to say otherwise is calling God out as a liar because he's already said, be strong and courageous. I'm giving you every place you set your foot. For us to say we can is to say you lied about that God. So I think one of the most essential, essential qualities, almost said essential oils, one of the most essential qualities of, of leadership is a positive attitude. And what better place to see that demonstrated than in our classrooms, right? I mean, I think that there's a spark that goes off in a, in a kid's eyes, in a student's eyes, when they have someone who believes they can investing in them. I, I love seeing this in, in athletics, right? When, when you're coaching a kid or pouring into a kid who, who you can tell when they started out, they lacked a little confidence. But as you invest in them and, and you encourage them and you teach them along the way and then they reach that point where they you can tell the light bulb goes off and they know, wait a minute, I can do this. I, I loved it in cross country, right? When we were coaching these kids and some of these kids got out there and, and the first day we're out, they couldn't even get out of the parking lot running, some of them. Right. And by the end of the season to see them being able to run a 5K and to just see the smile on their face. I did it without stopping. They believed that they could. And I believe that I can attitude is one of the most contagious things that a leader carries with them. A positive attitude. But here's what we have to understand. Our attitude is a choice. Right. We've got to choose it. Remember what we started out with in our, in our prayer? What, what did David say? This is the day the Lord has made. That's a fact. But, but what did he say after that? I will rejoice and be glad in it. He didn't say, this is the day the Lord has made. And boy, I feel like rejoicing and being glad today. Tomorrow I might have a headache, so I won't feel like it. Today, I'm, tomorrow I might have challenges, I might not feel like it, but today I, I feel like it, I'll do it. No, he said, I'm making a choice that I know because this is the day the Lord has made. I make a choice. I will praise the Lord. Listen, our attitude is a choice. It's, an, it's a choice. And, and many days... Many days, it is a matter of will. Uh, I, I remember when I was pastoring a church, I preached a, me a message series one time entitled At War with Dr. Phil. Not Dr. P-H-I-L, but Dr. F-E-E-L. Right. I'm at war with my feelings because I don't always feel like doing it. And we read through the Psalms. We find David made that declaration so many times of I will do it. It's not a matter of feel. I will I will do this. Right. So attitude is a choice. The second thing we need to understand about attitude is our attitude determines our actions. Whether we want to believe this or not, when we allow ourselves to have a horrible attitude, it changes the way that we act towards others. We think, oh, I, I'll just they won't they won't notice I'm having a bad day. No, people notice. Right. It's it's reflected in our actions when we choose to have a bitter attitude. Uh, and then the, the third thing is, is people. Um, 
The people we lead uh, are a mirror of our attitude. So sometimes we look out and we're like, boy, they're, they're acting like they're acting like they're in a bad mood today or boy I don't like the way they're acting most of the time listen the people we lead are acting in a way that mirrors our own attitude we set the culture we are the culture setters for the people that we lead now I, I know that you would say well I'm not taking the blame for the way some of those heathen act well I get that but the the point of this is we do set the culture in in the in the teams that we that we lead um, and then and then lastly very quickly uh, and this is something John Maxwell said and I think it's so good maintaining a good attitude is easier than regaining one right and boy is that that true uh, it's it's so much easier so much easier, even though it's hard sometimes to wake up and say, I'm going to choose a good attitude today. But we all know what it's like when we allow our mind to go down a negative road or when we allow our attitude to get bitter. Digging out of that can be so incredibly difficult, right? So it's better to just wake up every day and make a choice. You know what? This is the day the Lord has made. He's already said, I'm for you, not against you. He's already said, I'm the head, not the tail. He's already said that I can be strong and courageous. I'll go with you everywhere you go. So I will, I will bless the Lord with this day. So the first thing, positive attitude. My God, I made a promise. We're going to get through these, all right? Second, self-discipline. The first person that any of us lead is ourselves, right? The first person you lead is yourself. Um, and Tyra, Tyra will probably laugh at this, but I, I just want to encourage you. I know uh, Kelsey's a big fan as well, but I would encourage all of you. If you haven't read Atomic Habits by James Clear, you need to go, you need to go read that book. It's an amazing book that talks about this idea of, of self-discipline. Um, and I would really, really in, encourage you uh, to, to, to read that. Um, let me move through these really quick. I think we, we understand what self-discipline is about, um, but it's important. Uh, it's important for leaders to develop and follow, uh, to fo not only develop, but follow our priorities. Um, we need to know what's a priority in our life. And we need, to, we need to live our life with those priorities in mind and not be sidetracked by the, by the little things that can pop up on a, on a daily basis. Um, make a disciplined lifestyle your goal. All right, and, and this is one thing I love about uh, Atomic Habits um, uh, because he, he talks about this idea of, of a disciplined lifestyle or living a life of, of these daily habits and making making small incremental improvements on a on a daily basis but not letting not letting the big goal like not letting I want to win a championship be the goal let the systems that lead to that be your goal all right let the let the training that leads to that be your goal because you know um, a goal accomplished or a game won is so temporary, right? But the systems we build in our life, there's what they're what going to stay with us, right? Um, so I, I think back to what the uh, uh, I heard a military guy say. At, I think it was at impact training, right? That you never you never rise to the occasion; you fall to your level of training. Right. I think James Clear in his book says it something like um, you never. I don't remember how he says it. He says it differently. Uh, something about rising to the level of your goals, but falling to the level of your systems, something like that. He's same thing. Don't write that down because that's not correct. But go read the book and you'll you'll get the quote. All right. Moving on. Um, um, fourth or, or third very important challenge your excuses challenge your excuses you look at Joshua Joshua had a reason he had a reason not to not to want to step up to the leadership 
that God had called him to. Right. But God sort of crushed that that reason right in the beginning when he said, you know, because I can sort of see and, and I don't know if this is how it went. So don't don't write this down as scripture. This is the new King Jason version. Um, but I can just see I can see Joshua having this conversation with God. We're done now. We're done now. Moses, I mean, greatest leader ever been known. You, you saw the way he parted that Red Sea. We're done. We're not going to be able to do this. And, and what did God do? He just, he just crushed his excuses and said, Moses is dead. Don't lean on that anymore. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I give you the same promises that I gave Moses. Now go be strong and courageous. Because just like I said to Moses, every place you set your foot, I am with you. But God, there's giants there. Every place you set your foot, I'm with you. But God, even right before us, there's the Jordan River. How, how are we going to cross everywhere you set your foot? I am with you. Again, Joshua, be strong and courageous. And you can sort of see, in my mind at least, I'm thinking, I don't know what the rest of the story is, but it almost feels like there's some self-doubt that sort of pops up here. And God has to keep reminding him, valid argument, but not a great excuse. Be strong and courageous. You couldn't do it in your own power. Thank God you're not doing it in your power. Every place you step, I'm with you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. You can do this. Joshua. So let those excuses be crushed in your life and go be the leader that God has called you to be. But I got to do this online. I've never taught online before, but I am with you. But I've never had to interact with my students in this way. And this mask is so, but I'm with you. You can do all things through him who gives you strength. Amen. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. We ask you to help us to be the leader that you have called us to be. Let us rise to every challenge. Let us crush every excuse. And let us, oh God, make a difference in the lives you've called us to lead this day in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.